Roman here. It's been a while, gents, but we are back with episode 2 of Flight Planning 101. I apologize for the delay, but we've got a pretty cool piece of software to feature in today's episode. If you couldn't tell by the thumbnail, today we are looking at Combat Flight, which is currently a free planning program for DCS World. As always, the link is in the description. So for those of you who may not know, Combat Flight is an incredibly comprehensive flight planning program with a very practical and useful tool set. I've been following its progress for a few months now and as of 15 October 2018, version 1.0.2 is out and version 1.0.3 is apparently right around the corner with new improvements. This is a fantastic program by ED4 member Viper39. I cannot stress this enough. If you use DCS, you need Combat Flight in your toolbox. Personally, I think what this program does needs to be incorporated in part of the base DCS world, and I really think ED needs to reach out to Viper and make something happen here. Anyways, Combat Flight is actually such a comprehensive software package that it is impossible for me to cover all of its features in one video. In the future, I would like to do another DCS world utility guide on Combat Flight. But for today, we will continue the Flight Planning 101 series and focus on navigation while leveraging Combat Flight's strengths to speed up the process. I had a few comments suggesting that I break up the Flight Planning 101 into training segments, and so going forward, this is the format that I will be using as I do plan to continue this series. Okay, so on to navigation. Some of you may be thinking, hey, the aircraft I fly has an INS system. What more do I need? Well, yes, for a solo player, you can probably function just fine, but in the multiplayer arena or squadron environment with multiple packages and flights, what we're going to cover today lays the groundwork for time on target strikes, coordination, and more. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. First, it's important to note that there are some basic differences between civil aviation and our DCS combat aviation with respect to nav plans. In civil aviation, planning factors or forcings include weather, VFR versus IFR conditions, nav tools such as GPS, VORs, and ADF beacons. In VFR flight, a larger emphasis is on visual checkpoints, distance, and ground speed. The pilot generally prioritizes safety and redundancies when selecting a nav route. Of course, IFR changes a few things, but that's beyond the scope of this video. For us in DCS, the essential factors are mission. What's our objective? The intelligence. On ground threats, air threats, enemy disposition and capabilities, and likely response. Our aircraft or section capabilities are limitations. This includes nav systems and weapons delivery parameters. Special considerations are given for fuel, distance, and route selection, and of course the general tactical situation as well as weather. Moving on. Clearly your nav plan is going to be based around the capabilities and limitations of the aircraft you are flying. That said, it's unrealistic for me to examine each airframe in detail, so let's look at a very general scenario in combat flight. Okay, so you can see that we are now in combat flight and I've sketched out a very general scenario. Let's say this is blue flag or something like that. I've set up a enemy cap and some SAM sites, some infantry armor, whatnot that we know about. And of course, this map would probably have more threats on it in a realistic scenario, but uh, we may not have intelligence on those potential threats. Let's say these are threats that we do know about. And uh, we probably wouldn't know the patrol route of the cap, but we could definitely assume that they're going to have cap over some of their air assets. You can see we've set up a cap and a, a flight going out there. Maybe we've got friends or squadron mates that are doing that. And let's say that for this scenario, we've got uh, infantry or, um, you know, people that can spot, recon forces that can spot and make sure that these valleys are clean for us. We know that there's no AAA or, or what have you in these, these valleys. So we'll say that's good and we've marked them out for this scenario. So what we can do here in combat flight, and this is, let me preface this by saying, hey, I may not be able to necessarily tell you how you should plan your mission, but just to show you how combat flight can help you out. Let's say that for our scenario, we're going to attack this uh, SA-11 SAM site. And so we're going to do a uh, seed and we'll select a Hornet. We're flight at two. We'll pick the waypoints. We're going to launch from Seneki, take off from ramp. And we'll do ground speed. And of course, we're going to be on frequency 243.1. Okay, and we'll make this a package and mission commander for this scenario. Okay, everything looks good there, right? And we'll go ahead and, uh, as you can probably expect, we're, we could think about, you know, how we're going to do this. So they've got a, a naval group coming out here, feet wet, 
we'd have no cover. And if there's only two of us, that's probably not the best course of action. I personally would prefer to terrain mask. There's some nice valleys. We can probably loop around here and uh, get in this valley here, pop over, launch our Mavericks, turn back, terrain mask, get back in the valley, egress, that kind of scenario. So that might work out pretty well. Uh, you may choose to do things differently. Maybe you want to just come straight in, use some of these smaller valleys. Hey, whatever works for you. So we're going to add some waypoints here. After takeoff, and I'm going to change the color because that's hideous. After takeoff, and you can see it adds dog points right after. Uh, we're going to fly 300 knots, and we're going to go 1,000 feet. Actually, we'll change that to 500 feet AGL. And we'll be on frequency 243.1. Okay, and we'll just add some more waypoints here. Okay, and then we'll go to here. And then our IP, which will be this one. And our target, which is going to be that. And we may not actually fly that last leg, but we've got it there. And so egress back from four can just be the same thing. Boom. And we've got a nice flight plan created. And here's the cool thing about this. You've got um, doghouse is created for each leg. And so you can actually export this stuff later on, which is pretty phenomenal when you think about it. This one we don't need, so I'm just going to drag that over there. This one... We definitely don't need, oops, we're dragging that P around. There it is. We're going to drag that over there. But you can see, say you're in a Vigan or something like that, or maybe an F5, you've got magnetic course, the miles, and, you know, time, your AGL. And let's look at some of the other tools we have. Options, show train or long route. So there we go. It's thinking, it's showing different, uh, you know, trains and whatnot. There we go. So it's kind of a nice little view. Let's turn that off. Okay, some options here, tools. Let's look at a vertical profile. So each route leg, we can see some serious changes. And we can look at that stuff. This would be awesome for helicopter ops and whatnot. That'd be pretty phenomenal. You can see the target and our IP, nice, uh, big vertical. So a lot of altitude there for us to hide at. And this is the distance between the legs and our altitudes and whatnot. That'd be cool for, for stuff. Maybe not necessarily useful for this, but uh, still pretty cool. Oops. Back to combat flights. We'll close that out. Here's something pretty sweet. You go to mission. You go to kneeboard. You can generate pages. So our mission data card, it's given all the stuff that we want. If we want them in MGRS coordinates, lat longs, TACAN fixes, we've got it. Lat long for easy entering, that's probably cool. Uh, we can edit stuff in here. We can add you know, more information. We can put in the threats, um, you know, all sorts of really cool stuff. And we can, uh, let's see, print preview. And it's gonna generate the kneeboard it's going through, it's creating each page, and now you've got a PDF document at the end, and it's great for printing it out or putting it in your kneeboard in game. So maybe some advanced aircraft like F-18, you might not need this so much. You'll just remember it for a simple mission. But think about it, if you've got multiple packages, you can really have a really great graphic brief in the squadron or whatever it is that you're doing. Or if you're on an older aircraft, MiG-21, F-18, and you're doing it by uh, you know visual you know, just uh, dead reckoning skills, time, distance, and speed. That'd be pretty cool. So you can see the PDF view is now here, and we can see all the different legs, the dog houses, and of course this was very quick, but it, it, can, it is just this simple, just that quick, and we can plan something out in, in uh, combat flight. And uh, so that's pretty neat. Okay, so we could print that. I'm not going to. And it's cool because you can actually uh, export this to... Um, to DCS, you can you know you can do quite a bit of stuff here. Um, you can export data for like a, a vegan data cartridge. Um, you can export it for uh, 
N430, you know, for that Garmin module add-on for like MIHs and L39 and, and so much more. You can open up this graphic here into um, Google Earth. So it's really got a lot of good features. And uh, there's some other things we can do. We can look at, um, if we can find it here, a rehearsal. Let me find the rehearsal. Tools, rehearsal, there we go. So we could actually look at how uh, packages are going to coordinate with each other. You know, the cap, air to air refueling, everything else. We can actually see the units play out in real time. Now, the Red Force isn't necessarily so useful. But you can imagine how useful this would be for different squadrons and whatnot. This is pretty impressive stuff. So, anyways, that's uh, Combat Flight. If you haven't gotten it, you should definitely check it out. It's a great piece of software. Hey, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be worth your time. If you'd like to help us out, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing below. And if you haven't heard, we're now streaming on Twitch. Link in the description. Again, thanks for watching.